Hey guys, Casey Foster here from netcodeguides.com doing another demo review here for DAM. Uh, this is a Dust 2 matchmaking game. Apparently it's a five-man pre-made. Um, he says, this is a Dust 2 game. I played with five pre-mades. We tried doing some default strats and playing positions and stuff. I would like to know what I can improve on as a player, like movement, aim, and how to do it. I think we played a pretty good T-half, but we kind of crumbled on CT. I would like to get some tips on how to play CT. Um, he's currently a Supreme Master First Class, and uh, he's playing with globals in this game. So on his T-side, he pretty much... In their default strat, he pretty much watches the long push. Um, funny enough, this is the position that I used to play on Dust 2 uh, when I played professionally. It was, it's kind of like a, a lurker slash, you know, maybe get into a clutch situation later in the round. But basically, your main goal, your main goal as the long player, is to go to long every round, get the information, find how many smokes they've used at long, flashes, if there's a player in pit, if there's a player in corner, if there's a player pushed up, when they rotate off, um, how many players are there, and uh, kind of, it depends on the strat, but basically if you're not going to, you know, if there's not a chance of you going back to A, you basically kind of want to just keep the player at long A, throw some smokes, peek in and out of the doors, maybe shoot your gun, depends on what's really happening. Uh, it's kind of a situational spot. You've got to be really aware in this uh, position to play it well. But um, it's what he's been doing. He does the most of the game, and obviously he's done uh, the last round and this round. Uh, he obviously didn't have a lot of money, so he wasn't able to buy. But um, So the uh, CTs do a pretty good job pretty much every round of throwing a molly and or a smoke or a combination of both. Um throughout the match and basically this delays you a good 35 seconds the smoke is 15 the molly is probably another 15 and then you know give or take 10 seconds around each each one of those you know they've they delay you a really long time obviously it's matchmaking so there's a lot more time than a normal game but they do a pretty good job so um one of the things i wanted to mention on this round is um like I said, you were you were delayed pretty well here, and you have a teammate who comes and flashes you over long, and or sorry, he flashes over long, and you're gonna come out with it, and you kind of stutter there, and he obviously you got a little flashed, which means he was like, hey, I'm gonna flash over, you're gonna go out, so you went out a little early. Obviously, that's just a little communication thing. All you have to do is just you know wait for the fire in the hole or run out backwards, whichever one you want to do. Um, but this is where um, you get in a little bit of trouble, so. The effective ways to clear things, or there's an effective way to clear things on every spot of every map, and here you don't do it the best. So you come out along, you check the corner or the long A corner, and then now here you're looking towards pit, but you fully exposed yourself positionally wise to the long corner. So what what you would want to do, uh, let me turn this all the way down, and I'll show you um, a better way to do this. Oh, I can't free fly. Uh, a better way to do this... Oh, wow, it makes me go really slow. Okay, so obviously you're going to die. I'll just do this here in real time. But a better way to do this is when you're coming out a door... Oh, I can't stop it. Oh, I can. Um, is when you peek this guy here at corner, what you want to do is then directly peek this the, the pit player like this and then strafe behind the blue bin when you're peeking this guy. And you do that so that you're eliminating the position of being shot from the guy here at the long corner. And you're basically going to get yourself into a 1v1 versus this guy versus standing out in the open over here for too long. And potentially being shot by the guy at the corner and the guy at pit. And you'll have a much better success rate if you basically position yourself to eliminate being shot from more than one spot at a time. And um, you can do that by just moving your model basically um obviously you don't have a lot of equipment you did have a nade which you could have thrown at the corner to do two things push the player off do some damage um even even create like a smoke cloud he's not gonna be able to shoot you through it or see through it to shoot you so um just uh try that for the next time all right now here we are on another gun round uh this is actually something um that happened once earlier in the match and it's it's a it's not too high level, um, but it it's something that pretty much everybody should understand the concept of. So you're coming out long, 
the player's been here pretty much at long A the last few rounds. You guys have been killing him, winning a bunch of rounds. You have a full set of equipment. You got a smoke, um, a molly, and a grenade. And you just used your flash. Obviously, it was a bad flash, um, but it didn't stop you. That flash, it, it would have flashed him, but basically he would have just peeked around the corner and then came back. So two flashes is actually really effective for that, but one uh, doesn't really matter. So you miss the flash. You got to peek him right here. You do a good job jiggle peeking and getting him to shoot his gun right there. And now you've pulled out your knife. Um, this is another common play that a lot of people do is they use their knife to strafe out quickly to get him to shoot. You got him to shoot again. And this is where you make a mistake. You're posting on an opper with a rifle from long A. He has a massive advantage. Um, he's he's You're standing still and he's peeking you. So he's going to have peeker's advantage. It's a little bit less in CSGO than it was in Source in 1.6, but he still has the peeker's advantage and he has an op at long range. And he peeks out. Before you could even see his head, he's left eye peeking you. Boom, gets the kill, and you're dead. So there's a few different... Um, there's a few things that you could have done differently in that situation to uh, give yourself better results. So you did have a smoke and a Molotov and a grenade, I think. Uh, yeah, smoke, Molotov, grenade. So after you got him to shoot his first bullet... You could have had you could there's two options right there. You could have just ran out of the doors. Actually three options. You could have ran out of the doors, repositioned yourself behind blue boxes. I don't really recommend it, but it's what some people would have do, done just to get, you know, uh basically they would have got to behind blue boxes. They would have said, Hey, there's a guy at corner, I'm gonna smoke him or I'm gonna grenade him or I'm gonna Molotov him off, you come peek the corner and we'll basically kill this guy together. That's one option. The next option would have just been to drop a smoke basically in his line or at the corner, and you could have got into pit. Um, you could have thrown a Molotov deep and then threw a smoke and basically did the same thing. So you had a bunch of other options. You guys are obviously up 9-3. You guys have just been destroying these guys. You know, you have a bit of confidence when peeking this guy, but, you know, he has the advantage in that situation. He's, long, he's far away from you with an op. You have an AK. Obviously, I've been watching your your demo. Your 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 aim is pretty good. Uh, there's not really much to comment on on that. Uh, but basically, you just made a bad decision fighting somebody in a situation where you didn't need to. Okay, and here we are actually on an eco round for you guys. Um, you're trying to boost up here on Cat. You fell down CT spawn and. You're basically running towards Cat now to go back to your position. Now you have to know in your head. This is an eco round. Um, you bought a gun, uh, a 5.7, uh, some some kind of investment. And your main goal out of an eco round is, well, you may potentially win the round, but to get a return on your investment, damage their economy, potentially win the round, um, delay them hitting the bomb sites. You you have a it's 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 tough on an eco round, but it's your main goal. Um, and obviously your your ultimate goal is winning the round, but it's probably the last thing to come. Um, but here you are coming into cat. You wasted a lot of time trying to go for the cat boost, and you basically are running towards cat here in no man's land. You had no information on where they were at on cat. You're getting basically surprised here because based on where your crosshairs at, you're not expecting this guy here, and he just gets a free kill on you. And you did do a little damage, but he basically got a free kill on you. And that's that's just one thing you have to just keep in mind that when you're out of position. And you don't have intel as to if they're up cat. You know, you don't have a mid player who's got an op. You know, maybe he did tell you they were up cat. But either way, you know, you're just running into no man's land. And it did nothing to contribute to the round. Your best bet at that point was to just sit in sight and spot them. Obviously, they've got full nades. They're going to nade you. They're going to, you know, Molotov you, all that kind of stuff. But um, it, was just, it was just a mistake of just being surprised and being unaware as to where the bad guys could be. And it was all due to timing. Um, on an eco round, like I said, your main goal, do a little damage, delay them, you know, try and mess up their economy, that kind of thing. All right, so this is um, this is a big thing that loses a lot of teams' rounds. I don't think you actually lose this round because of it, um, or I don't think you actually lose the round in general, but this is something that's that just has to stop. So you guys are in a 4v5. Your teammate got a mid-kill with an op. You guys are in a 4v5, man advantage, and you're pushing cat. Pretty much the reason I'm mentioning this is is this is a situational thing. There's pretty much no reason for you to be pushing Cat. Um, you pushed it uh, a few rounds earlier, and you're, uh, you're you're basically doing nothing. You have some information. Yeah, mid's clear, but 
they ha- they're they in a 4v5, so they're like, oh, shoot, we just got picked. We need to do something. We need to regroup. We need to sit and think about what we're going to do. And you're jumping around, making all this noise. You pull your knife out, and you get surprised by a lower B player. Obviously, your crosshair was right on his head, but he had the jump on you. He heard you, and you're, you were still pulling your gun out. So this is a mistake. You now put you guys were in a 5v4. You had numbers, and now you're in a 4v4. There's There was pretty much no reason to do that is... is is the, the ultimate goal of this. Um, you do the same thing the next round, actually, after this, um, except you're not in a 4v4, or sorry, a 4v5, but you basically make the same exact play um, with a pistol. And the the reason I'm mentioning this is because you, you made the mistake last round of doing the same exact thing. You almost get shot by the opera here, and now you're in lower B, and you get killed again, putting yourself, putting your teammates, obviously you guys are in an eco, um, but putting your guys, uh, putting your teammates in a disadvantage. So again, eco rounds, you pretty much just want to turtle up and just do some damage and have a flash, maybe get some kind of trade kills. Um, but, you know, the, the whole the whole goal of what you were trying to do there was, uh, was a very ineffective goal. It, it wasn't going to do anything for your team. Okay. And here we are on another gun round. Um, you seem to be like you seem to like to play cat. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this. Actually, I, I don't agree with this at all. Playing cat and with your guys' setup, so you guys have two and B, and you have a two A player long setup. You have one in pit, one at the corner, and you're playing cat. Um, if they go mid to B right here, you lose. If they um, yeah, pretty much if they go mid to B here, you guys would lose because you're not in a position to play the rotator spot. And that's ultimately what your goal would be in this kind of setup is you would be playing like cat drop off uh, like right on this ledge or CD spawn to stop them if they go mid to B or to get the information if they go mid to B. And, and you would help your mid player, your mid, your B players know that they're coming out of mid. So I think you have the B player looking at mid with an op or something, but... He's only going to get one. They're just going to flash him back, and they would. If they took a, a B split from tunnels and doors, they would win that. So, anyway, here you are playing aggressive cat, and this guy gets flashed through the smoke. His teammate flashed him a little bit. Actually, you get the jump on him and get the kill. Great job. You know, it was a risk. If there was more than one player that came through that smoke, you would have got trade killed on. Uh, but you got the kill. So good job. Again, here you are in a five versus four situation. And this is something that every player needs to keep account, keep keep in account for. You guys are in a 5v4. You have the man advantage. They have to come to you. They have the bomb. If you just simply fell back to the site, you it would pretty much it would it should be a guaranteed round one because you guys are up numbers. They have to come to you. You're delaying them. Instead, you stay on cat. They flash this other second guy through, and he gets an easy kill on you with a pistol. Uh, he actually had an op, but you stayed on cat. And I would have liked to have seen you fall back to Goose or fall fallen back to Sight or Ramp, any of the three, or even CT Spawn, because you still had two players at long A and you still had two players at B. Falling back to CT Spawn or mid would have benefit your team more than you dying on Cat. All right, and this is actually the last round um, that there was actually some something to commentate on. But this is, um, this, this is going to be tough for you guys. Uh, you have two ops at A, and you're playing kind of jumping around between Cat and Long with an op. And this guy obviously on Cat right here has an op, only we can see that because we have uh, X-Ray on. But it's it's not, if you don't have anybody in mid telling you that they're up Cat, so you do have somebody in mid, but I don't think he knew that that player was up Cat, because if he did tell you that, you would not want to be doing what you're doing. You would not want to be peeking Cat, because if there's a player up close with an AK, you're dead. If there was a player with this guy basically playing trade kills like there should have been, you would have died, you would have got traded on, you would have got a one-for-one, one, and I would go all day a one-for-one one on terrorist side of me in a 4v4, because you're going to have that advantage. So you get the kill, um... <laughs> you know, it 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 was it was it was a good shot, but it was still not the right play. It, it worked out for you, but it was not the right play. And that's something that a lot of people tend to think they made the right play, or they think uh, that it was okay it, because they they did win the round or they did get the kill. Um, but it was not. I, anyway, 
I would like to have seen you with the op on site or on ramp. Um, obviously, you guys had a you guys were getting pinched from long A as well, and that was going to be tough. But you pretty much don't want to be playing an aggressive catwalk play with an op. It's just not uh, it's it's not going to be very beneficial. So that concludes this demo review. Just to recap a few things. Um, your play style was really aggressive on CT side. It got you killed a bit when you were pushing Cat, but that's because you guys were just shit stomping these guys, and it, um, it it got you killed a few times. Put your put your teammates in a bad situation. I think you guys ended up still winning those rounds where you put yourself where you guys put yourself in bad situations. And then the other thing is you're playing a little too passive on T side, which I would like to fl I would like you to flip those roles. I would like you to be a little bit more aggressive on T side and a little bit more passive on CT. So try that out um, for the long A. Mentioned it earlier, you really want to try and get as much information as you can. You want to keep the long A players there when your teammates are executing elsewhere on the map. You really want to keep the long A players there when your teammates are going up cat or when they're hitting B or whatever they're doing. But that's your main goal is getting information and keeping the bad guys there. Um, and making the right decisions based on what guns and what situations you're at in the game. Obviously, you're a Supreme Master First Class. You're, you're, you're not a noob. You've obviously... Uh, worked your, right, your way up the matchmaking rank, um, but there's a lot of little things that you did wrong in the game that got you killed, and that's what separates really good players from the average players is just minimizing those mistakes. So Long A, that example earlier where he peeked out with an op and you had an AK and you posted on him with an op, or you posted on him with an AK and he killed you with the op. That was just another small little situation where you could have made a different decision, and you have to know that. And that really comes from, you know, watching demos, watching reviews, watching our guides. You know, they're going to tell you not to do this in situations, to do this in situations, how to effectively take long. Um, we have a how to take long Dust 2 video, so you could have done that by yourself a lot of the times on T side you could have used the smoke and a flash and got out of long A and taken long A by yourself and really contributed to the rounds versus just being a really 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 passive long A player so try doing that and then obviously for your next demo review if you submit another please submit a demo or a match that was a closer match and or one that you lost so there's going to be a lot more information or a lot more content for us to commentate on because <clears throat> you guys basically owned these guys. Five eight or uh, sorry, sixteen eight is a pretty ownage scoreline. I mean, you, a lot of pro matches don't end that in that soon. It's more like sixteen ten, sixteen eleven, which is a, still a good win for the team. But just owning these guys sixteen eight, I think you guys won first half thirteen two or twelve three. Um, that's that's pretty much just shit stomping the guys. So for your next demo, find one that you lose or you don't just run around just killing these guys and outskilling them. You guys are just completely out aiming this entire team. Look at him standing still trying to fight an opera on cat. I mean, that's not the right play. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this demo review. Comment and subscribe and like the video. And if you want to have your demo reviewed, send it in netcodeguides.com. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. This was Casey Foster from netcodeguides.com.